Kia ora, no mai hari mai, ki no kapapa o taranei. In Vikago, Mayor Tim Shadbolt is hoping for a substantial contribution from the Auckland City Council towards the inaugural A to B Ocean Race, despite a funding request by organisers having already been turned down. Mr Shadbolt says he spoke to a council staff representative last week and ask, asking the Auckland City Council to put between twenty and $280,000 towards the event. That money could be used for events to emphasise the start of the race, including promotion of Southland. Invercargill City Council is contributing $280,000 toward the event and Mr Shadbolt says he thinks Auckland City Council should contribute as well. Mr Shadbolt says he expects a response within a week. Southlanders are being warned to expect gale force winds overnight and secure property. Met Service is predicting gusts of up to 120 kilometres an hour in exposed places. People are being warned to bring in or secure outdoor furniture and trampolines. Boat owners were also advised to check their moorings. The warning also applies to the Southland coast and Stewart Island as well as Lakes Tianao and Manapuri. Petrol prices rose today on the back of a petrol excise increase which will see petrol tax rise 3 cents a litre annually for the next three years. Road user charges which apply to diesel vehicles have also increased by a similar amount. Previously government taxed petrol at around 60 cents per litre but now that figure will rise to, seven, rise to 70 cents by 2015. At the pump today, petrol prices are sitting at around $2.19 per litre of regular petrol and $1.50 per litre of diesel. The extra revenue has been earmarked for the country's road network and public transport improvements. Seatbelts saved the lives of three people involved in a serious crash near Lumsden yesterday afternoon. Emergency services were called to a single vehicle crash at 3.40 on State Highway 6 at the Lumsden North Culvert. Police say a van towing a trailer drifted to the left side of the road and collided with the concrete edge of the culvert, with the van coming to a stop upside down in the culvert. The 32-year-old male driver was taken to Dunedin Hospital with serious leg injuries and a 10-year-old boy was also taken for observation. The other occupant was an 8-year-old girl. Police say the occupants were wearing seat belts which prevented fatalities. Inquiries are continuing. Māori Language Week began today and among those promoting a range of activities to support te reo was the Waihopai City Library. The library this morning began by welcoming the public to join a display of traditional harakiki weaving and basketwork. It will also host performances of waiata and kapahaka throughout the week. The Māori Language Commission initiative, which runs throughout the country from today until Sunday, aims to encourage communities to promote the use of te reo. Na, na, Naitahu Kamatua, Michael Skerritt, says there's been promising growth in community interest in Te Reo. Yeah, one or hours or all is based on Southern Institute of Technology campus and I understand they're turning people away, their classes are full, so that's really encouraging. And how much more could we be doing to promote the use? I think media could be a big help. There's a lot of mispronunciation, you know, things like how racket. Uh, you know, that's as hauraki and a bit more understanding of uh, the vowel sounds and that sort of thing. And, and, and the media is the place you could really do that. And how beneficial is Māori Language Week? Yeah, I think it helps promote it. Uh, things like it are going on here today with the weaving and uh, seeing people sitting around doing that, you know, for the public as they come in. I think that, that sort of thing's really good. Knights in shining armour have been making a big difference at Southland's Riding for the Disabled Centre. Almost $25,000 worth of work has been donated by local businesses, which otherwise would have taken a year to fundraise for. Callaghan Contracting and Southern Southland have been chipping trees removed to make room for a new boundary fence, while an extended car park has been donated by the roading company. Horse care manager Suzanne Toomey says four of the association's six acres have been unusable since December due to the lack of adequate fencing. But the work will change this. It means that we can finish our boundary fences, um, which we started in December, um, and then we got the trees taken down, and then we can start on our internal fences, which is really important for the horses so that we can actually have it subdivided. Yeah. So why is that an important goal for you? Basically it's just management of the horses so that we can actually have smaller paddocks for them so that they can actually be rotated around easier yeah, and also access for, for volunteers and for staff that work down here. 
Has it been heartening to see uh, local businesses want to come on board and help? Oh, it's absolutely fabulous to see that, you know, what they are willing to do for us. It's just, yeah, we're very, very grateful. After the break, who's brought two South and environment groups together? Welcome back. Enrolment numbers in Invercargill and Gore are well above the national figure ahead of this year's local government elections. With the Electoral Commission today kicking off an enrolment drive to get voters correctly enrolled ahead of elections. Elections for local councils, health boards, community boards and licensing trusts around the country will be held in September and October. Nationally, the number of eligible voters enrolled is just below 93%, while Invercargill is close to 99% and Gore is almost 97%. South and District is around a percent lower than the National at almost 92%. 3.1 million enrolment update packs are being sent to voters around the country. Concerns are being raised over a new progress and consistency tool designed to increase the consistency of national standards achievement judgments by teachers. In recent weeks, many national education organisations have voted to boycott the tool. I spoke to South and Primary Principals Association President Ben Witherford about local concerns. There's, there's some standards that have been written for various year groups and teachers use those standards and they make a, an informed judgement based on what the child's done and say whether they've met the standard or they're below the standard or above the standard. Um, and then we report that to the Ministry uh, at the beginning of each year for the previous year. So because, you know, in a school of eight classrooms, there's eight classroom teachers all making their judgments, the schools will have its own internal moderation uh, systems in place, but there's no, um, no systems in place that cover across schools or across the entire uh, primary system. So I think that's what the Ministry is aiming to do without going down the path of actually having a test that's done. This would be almost as close as though? Yes, it's probably, some would argue, and it's very close to calling it everything but uh, an actual standardised test, yes. What is the feeling among the um, Primary Principals Association in Southland? Um, I think, to be fair, we're approaching this with a lot of caution um, because it's, it, it's a feeling that it's been done to us. Um, for example, it's been made mandatory as of the 2015 school year. We don't think this is um, a good use of ministry resources. We don't think it's going to lead to the overall aim, which we all have, which is increased student achievement. What would be an ideal outcome for you? There needs to be clearly some sort of um, tool that can be used as a measurement. Will they perceive that they need to have a tool like that? Well, like I said, we're not convinced there is a need. Um, we're told apparently there's been people, nobody quantifies who the people are, but people have asked for this sort of tool. Um, but that hasn't been justified to us, it hasn't been explained in any depth to us, so we're not convinced there is a need. Um, what we ne if we go back a few steps, national standards have been in place now for um, a touch on three years, but they weren't have developed with the profession, so the profession is, is um, educational leaders and teachers didn't have actually a say into how they were written, um, what, what was written in them. So I think there's some earlier decisions that were made that have led to maybe some data that's coming through now that's not as reliable as, as people would like. Improving the environment has brought two groups of volunteers south of Invercargill together recently. Sarah Bedford took a look at the work the Bluff Hill Motopohu Environmental Trust and the Amaui Landcare Group are doing. Two Southland environment groups have joined forces in their work to protect their natural habitats and rid them of pests. The Bluff Hill Motapahui Environment Trust was set up five years ago and its efforts are being seen and heard, with hundreds of predators caught and bird count in the area having tripled. I think they've got a count of about 130 now uh, on the uh, three minute bird counts, but I believe there's a lot more than that out there. And the residents have uh, told us they've found many, many more birds visiting their feeders and being in their yards. Volunteers are key to the Trust's work. Um, we are 100% workforce. If we didn't have the volunteers, the work wouldn't get done and the cost to hire trappers and exterminators every year is just too much. As well as continuing work to keep pest numbers down in the Bluff Hill area, the Trust also has a long-term view. Well, we want the forest health to be really a lot better. We want it to expand. We'd love to see it pest-free, but that can't happen because of the harbour and the isthmus still allows the pests to get come up to the hill. 
So the best we can do is make the trust as sustainable as possible because it's a forever venture. We have to be sure we can recruit enough volunteers and raise enough money. So we're working on that. Recently, the Trust joined forces with the O'Malley Landcare Group, a community initiative set up four months ago due to concerns about pest numbers in the area. Landcare Group spokesman Steve Morris says the group sought advice from the Trust, which led to the decision to come under its umbrella. They kindly made us a very nice offer of going under their wing and using their set-up infrastructure as a charity of us being able to, to start a trapping program as an autonomous group here in O'Malley. So, yeah, it's, it all came together quite quickly. He says it's been a huge help and they'd still be setting up as a trust if it weren't for the Bluff Group's help. Support for the newly formed group has been strong with good volunteer turnout to its first community workshop. Mr Morris says there's also been good support from businesses. Mainly we have um, a Jono from Remarkable Sweet Shop in Queenstown. Uh, believe it or not, one of the best baits for possums um, is licorice all sorts. And uh, they're kindly sponsoring both the, the Amari and the Bluff Group with the, the baits at the moment. And uh, we had a very kind donation from uh, Harvey Norman of a GPS, which enables us to locate where the traps are going to go and find our way through the bush. Uh, you know, to get our infrastructure and our lines in to carry everything out. So but it's been a very positive um, reaction so far from local businesses and people. For now, there are 32 traps in the area, but longer term, it's hoped the group can undertake pest control work on more than 230 hectares of land, helping to return it to its natural state. You know, the whole goal is to, is to benefit a Maui as a place. Uh, and all the wildlife involved um, and uh, all the trees and, and yeah basically just try and get the balance back to nature to where it should be. Both groups are looking at ways to extend their work hoping to give native species a better chance against predators. Sarah Bedford, South Today News. And that's it from news coming up in sport another blow for the Highlanders that's after the weather next. Ka kite anō.